how do you stay focused with so many distractions? Now that's a broad question because staying focused can mean several things. So I thought I would break it apart into the three areas of focus that have helped me the most. Hey, I'm Terry Savelle Foy, your cheerleader of dreams. Thank you for joining me. You know, I posted something on Instagram recently asking if we could just sit down and talk, what is the one question you'd want me to answer? Well, based on the top questions I received, this one had to do with focus. In fact, the question was, how do you stay focused with so many distractions? Now that's a broad question because staying focused can mean several things. So I thought I would break it apart into the three areas of focus that have helped me the most. So number one is focus with my habits. Number two is focus with my time. And three is focused on my dreams. So I'll start with the first one, which is how do you stay focused with your habits? Well, my answer is, be very protective of your mornings, the morning hours. You know, I learned that successful people are proactive about their day, not reactive. In other words, they take care of themselves first thing in the morning before they attend to anyone around them. Now you've probably heard me share like about the flight attendant, you know, when you get on an airplane and they always say, put your oxygen mask on first before you attend to anyone around you, even your small children. Well, it's the same with your daily agenda. Once you've invested in yourself first thing in the morning, then you're well prepared to invest in people around you, even your small children. And the truth is, morning rituals can change your entire life and lead you to success. I'm absolutely convinced. You know, that's exactly what happened in my life. Anytime someone asks me, you know, Terry, how did your life change so drastically? I always respond with, I changed my routine and it changed my whole life. And I'm referring to my morning routine. See, I made a decision to just get up a little bit earlier than normal, like 30 minutes, you know, to go for a walk and spend time with God. Then that led to an hour, then two hours. So I could also journal and read and listen to motivational messages just investing in myself first thing in the morning. Well, I began noticing drastic changes in my thinking, my body, my dreams, my intellect. And that's when I realized the secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine. In fact, you know, John Acuff says um, that the only way he could be consistent in his personal growth, you know, in addition to working a full-time job, raising a family with his wife, he said the only way I could do that was start being selfish at five o'clock in the morning. He said he began this discipline of just getting up at the crack of dawn to read, to listen to messages, to pray, to journal, to write. He said, it's interesting. Since I began this, not one time has my wife complained that I wasn't spending time with her at five o'clock in the morning. He said, not one time has my daughter asked me to ride bikes with her at five o'clock in the morning. He said, that's your time to focus on you, your personal development. In other words, own your mornings. So see, I had to understand that if the idea of setting your alarm 30 minutes earlier sounds horrible, then I may not be ready to get out of a rut or go above average to live my dreams. In fact, John Acuff says, if your dream isn't worth 30 minutes of your time, you've either got the wrong dream or you're just pretending to have one. Well, see, that's the realization I had to come to if I was ever going to change my life. In fact, I heard someone define the word poor as passing over opportunities repeatedly. Think about that. And you might go, Terry, that's just it. I haven't had any opportunities. But here's the argument. Yes, you do. Yes, I do. Every morning at five o'clock or six o'clock or seven o'clock, whatever time for you, you have an opportunity to get up and invest in your future. So I recommend starting with the hour of power, like Tony Robbins calls it, 20 minutes in prayer, 20 minutes of exercise, and 20 minutes of reading. Start with that. You know, after one year, that's 365 hours of personal growth. Guard your morning routine diligently. Don't let anything prevent you from getting up and investing in you. That's how you stay focused. Number two, how do you stay focused with your time? Well, my answer to that is 
always use a planner, and I've got my little iPad right here, always use a planner and map your time. Now, when you start mapping your time, you will be shocked at how much time is wasted each day without even realizing it. You know, they say the average American is watching over four hours of TV a day. It's like four to six hours. So that's over one full day a week. If seven times four is 28, that's one full day a week sitting in front of a TV set, or as I like to say, watching other people live their dreams. So I had to ask myself, is it getting me closer to my goals? No. Watching other people fall in love, lose weight, start businesses, travel the world, that's not helping me at all. So here's a few tips to help you stay focused throughout the day. Number one is use one planner or one calendar. See, focus is the number one key ingredient to achieving your dreams and goals. Well, in order to get focus, you need to get organized. Well, I learned years ago to document every single thing in one consistent planner. You have one life, you need one planner. Number two is write everything down. Don't rely on memory alone. In other words, making a to-do list at the beginning of every day or week can make you feel more focused and motivated to continue your work. Now, if you make a list of all the things you have to do, no matter how small, you're going to feel more accomplished when you check those items off your list and move on to the next one. Plus, our flesh loves check marks. Number three, practice what I call the Sunday night strategy. Now, honestly, you can do this any day of the week, but I always plan my entire week out on Sunday night, and it gives me an overview of exactly what I need to accomplish and how packed my schedule is. I can see immediately if I have time for any lunch appointments or doctor visits or playtime or errands or dinner with friends. And see, this just sets you up to succeed by having your week completely thought out and organized. You're no longer just going to wake up and wonder what the day brings. No, you bring it. You arise Monday morning with a vision, a plan, ready to succeed on purpose. And just on a side note, Personally, I always make two columns, my business goals and my personal goals, just for the week. I begin listing every single thing I can think of personally, like pay bills, sort laundry, call the dentist, get the car washed, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be in chronological order of when you're going to take action. It just needs to be thought out and written. After I list everything personally, then I do the same thing with my business goals. And you know what? There's hardly a day that I don't achieve what I set out to do because it's thoroughly planned. And here's the thing. What gets scheduled gets done. Now, I may be going super fast. And so at the end, I'm going to show you how to download my notes from today's podcast so you can reread this and apply it to your life. So I'll just keep going. And at the end, you can download this. But number four is plan each day the night before. See, in addition to the Sunday night strategy, you need to have an every night strategy where you never go to bed without mapping out the next day. You simply go down your list and goals for the week and assign a day to each task. So wash the car Tuesday after work, you know, pay the bills Sunday night. So you just assign a day. Number five with this is time yourself. Now this is a two-step process. You have to determine how long each task takes. And when I began to learn this, it changed everything. See, after you see your daily schedule, you need to know approximately how much time is required in order to be realistic about your to-do list. See, many times we, I think we undercalculate the time needed and we end up frustrated with how few of our goals were achieved that day. Like I used to make a list of 87 things to do And then I only did 19. 19! (laughs) That's a lot. But I was frustrated and mad at myself and feeling unproductive. Why? Because my list was completely unrealistic. I thought I could write an article in two hours, but once I started timing myself, it was more like four hours or more. Or I thought a phone call would be like 10 minutes. It was more like 30 minutes. See, when I first began to apply this principle, of just calculating how long each task takes. It was tedious at first, but after a while, I began to catch on, and it enabled me to make my daily to-do list in a practical and possible way. Now, this includes the time it takes to get ready each day, the time to commute, the time to prepare dinner, 
And you may dread this in the beginning, but trust me, it's going to lead to an extremely productive life. The second part of this is determine how much time you need to stay focused on a task. You know, deadlines are motivating, even 30-minute ones. And because we live in such a distraction-filled society, it's a challenge to stay focused on one task even for half an hour without checking Facebook or answering a task text or, you know, looking at photos on Instagram. Well, you need deadlines to stay focused. So give yourself 30 minutes to work on a certain task with no distractions. That means you don't get up, you don't check Instagram, you don't go to the restroom, you don't even look at your phone. You stay focused for 30 minutes. Well, then when the 30 minutes goes by, check your phone, get on social media, go to the restroom, grab a bite to eat, and then do it again. Set the timer for 30 minutes and get productive until you can build up to 60 minutes with no distractions, with the ultimate goal of being 90 minutes uninterrupted. You know, they've they've proven this in the business world. If you can go 90 minutes, your productivity will quadruple. So that's that's my clues on that. And the third thing I wanted to share on the topic of being focused is how do you stay focused on your dreams? My answer to this is, success is determined by what you say no to. This is not easy, and I'm telling you, even I struggle with this right now. But focus, you know, it's the opposite of being distracted. When we have too many ideas and opportunities, we lose our focus and we end up accomplishing nothing. You know, when Warren Buffett, who's worth $50 billion, was asked to boil his key to success down to one single principle, This was his shocking response. He said, for every 100 great opportunities that are brought to me, he said, I say no 99 times. Think about that. He attributes his unprecedented success to his ability to say no, or you could say to stay focused. You know, Darren Hardy asked the late Steve Jobs, he said, what are you most proud of? You know, in terms of breakthrough products that you and Apple have built, You know what Steve Jobs said? He said, I am as proud of what we don't do as I am of what we do. He went on to say, deciding what not to do is as important as deciding what to do. And that statement is true for companies, entrepreneurs, stay-at-home moms, authors, pastors, teachers, real estate agents. Focus is just as much about saying no as it is to saying yes. So what will you start saying no to? in order to achieve your most important goals this year. And hey, if you enjoyed this podcast today and you think I was going way too fast, I would love for you to get my notes. If you'd like to know a little more on how I stay focused and how you can too, you can actually download my podcast notes today by clicking the link below or go to terry.com slash stay focused. And don't forget, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And if this video spoke to you, share it with a friend. Because that's where you're going to start getting closer and closer to your goals is when your closest friends are on the same path as you. So share it with somebody that you admire, that you want to achieve your goals with. And hey, thank you for watching. And remember, I'm cheering you on to live your dreams.